Hello, my name is Dr. Elliot Herschel and I'm a board certified chiropractic neurologist. In my practice, I help people with chronic conditions to literally get their lives back. People come into our office, they're just sick and tired of being sick and tired and we give them options and opportunities to really get their lives back to where they want to be. Today I want to talk to you about gluten sensitivity and based on a recent study that was widely publicized in the media, it, uh, the existence of gluten sensitivity was debunked um, by the, some of the so-called experts that were evaluating this study. So let's talk about gluten sensitivity and whether or not it really exists because this is one of the things that we really work with on our patients and find that it is present in a lot of our patients. Okay, so this was a recent study that was done. It was just one study. There's a lot of different studies out there in the literature about gluten sensitivity. The one that was recently in the news is only one of many. What it did was it questioned the relationship between non-celiac gluten sensitivity, so it was not people that had gluten, that had celiac disease. It was gluten sensitivity, non-celiac. Um, and it was looking, between, looking at the relationship between that and digestive symptoms only. And basically what happened was the media really started to mislead the public because they glossed over a lot of major points and they were cherry picking some of the information. So I'm gonna go through some of the details with you and kind of give you the full story in regard to what was happening with this particular study. So in this study in question, they wanted to eliminate other potential factors causing digestive issues so they could solely focus in on whether or not it was gluten sensitivity. So they eliminated what are called FODMAPs from these people's diets in this study. FODMAP stands for fermentable, oligo, dye, and monosaccharides, and polyols. These types of foods are in things like garlic, onions, beans, fruits, yogurts, and other things. So they removed these as well because they are also known to cause digestive issues. So they didn't want to have um, another factor that might be leading to the digestive problem. Uh, what they found was that the gluten had no effect on the patients with the gluten sensitivity when they were put on the low FODMAP diet. So they removed uh, they removed the FODMAPs and then the gluten, when the people were exposed to the gluten, they didn't have any digestive symptoms. Journalists basically said that gluten sensitivity therefore does not exist, even though the paper itself, the research authors themselves, did not indicate this as a conclusion. They brought up other potential possibilities, things like the fact that, well, since we removed the gluten, um, uh, since we removed the FODMAPs, maybe it's the FODMAPs and the gluten working together to cause the digestive issues. And basically they indicated that we need to do more research because again, this is only one study and there's a lot of other studies out there that do point to the potential issues with the gluten sensitivity. So the gluten sensitivity doesn't just cause digestive issues. Remember I said in this study, all they looked at was digestive problems. They didn't look at any other potential symptoms. What happens is that gluten sensitivity only causes digestive issues in one third of the patients with gluten sensitivity. So for the other two thirds, it's causing a lot of other issues as well. It's been known to destroy brain tissues more than any other tissue type. Symptoms can actually be ambiguous for a, lot of, a long time. You, know, you don't even notice any symptoms, and a lot of times you don't even connect it to the gluten sensitivity itself. It can affect skin, joints, bones, and it's associated with other diseases. About 55 other diseases have been linked to gluten sensitivity. A lot of those are autoimmune diseases. So other symptoms that may manifest from gluten sensitivity, things like depression, muscle pains, inflammation, neurological issues, and changes in mental function. Other factors that were also not considered in this study are things like gluten cross-reactivity, which is associated with autoimmunity. Autoimmunity is when your immune system is actually attacking self tissue, things like thyroid tissue or bone tissue in, in rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis where it's attacking nervous tissue. It's also associated with leaky gut and food sensitivities of other types like dairy, egg, soy, and a lot of other grains that a lot of times get substituted for gluten actually in gluten-free products. So does gluten sensitivity actually exist? Now there's no official you know, FDA approved biomarker to identify a gluten sensitivity. However, we use a particular antibody test for our patients where we're measuring antibodies to different um, gluten-associated um, uh, biomarkers or uh, gluten-associated uh, proteins that uh, the patient may be producing antibodies to. And what we find is that many of our patients are producing antibodies to different parts of the gluten molecule. And so there is a lot of other research that also shows clear evidence of gluten sensitivity. So should you abandon your gluten-free diet? There are new questions that have to be answered based on this study, but this study sh does not indicate that you need to stop your gluten-free diet. And the reason why is because we see millions of people around the world that have a 
reduction in their symptoms and a decrease in the progression of a lot of chronic diseases when they get off of gluten. So we see it clinically in our patients, uh, in, their, uh, in their actual symptoms and, and in the progression of diseases that getting off of gluten is extremely helpful. Now obviously we need to do more research to find out what is the underlying mechanism behind that, but for the time being we know that it works, so we need to keep doing that. There's a good, enough good evidence just in the fact that people are feeling much better. So I would not recommend that you get off your gluten-free diet. So when we help people in, in regards to whatever they're coming into our office for, whatever chronic disease we're helping, helping somebody with, whether it's diabetes or fibromyalgia or chronic pain or autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's or neurodevelopmental diseases like ADHD, we always evaluate our patients from a holistic perspective. So we're doing a health history, a lifestyle evaluation, looking at hereditary factors, nutritional status, environmental risk factors. We're looking at a complete neurological workup. We might do blood work and urinalysis and different types of things uh, from a laboratory perspective. And then what we do is we put together a customized specific plan that includes dietary changes, maybe nutritional supplementation, gut health support. We're removing inflammatory triggers and we're supporting the patient neurologically with neurological rehabilitation. If you or somebody you know think you might be able to benefit from what we have to offer, go to our website, renewingfunction.com to learn more information or give the office a call to set up an appointment. The number is 864-757-8500. Look forward to helping you out. Take care. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.